Most of the artists I collect today are in the Smithsonian and known all over the world. All the artists that I collected were untrained and they painted on whatever they could find. So here he just painted on his bedpost his dog Toto, which was his dog. This right here is Jimmy Lee Suttoth, the self-portrait of the artist. He was from Fayette, Alabama, and he painted with his fingers. Jimmy Lee always said, that way I never have to worry about the paintbrush wearing out. This right here is Bridge Friday by Bernice Sims. This was the first artist I ever collected from Bruton, Alabama, Bernice Sims. She was like a mom to me. This over here, of course, is the legendary Clementine Hunter's work. This is a cotton picking scene, and this is Baptism on Cane River. This is Howard Finster's work. This is Mr. Coke. It says heaven is as high as you can go and the bottom is as low as you can go. B.F. Perkins was a very patriotic artist. And uh, when he came back from the war one time, he said, I've seen everything in Europe and we live in the best place in the world because we live in America. What really interests me about this type of art is that it was from the heart. Here these people had a way of expressing themselves that was very, very genuine. They had no formal training in art, yet they expressed themselves. Other people told them they created a work of art. They had no idea they had created a work of art. It was just something from the heart. It was their passion, and therefore it became my passion. I was a student at the time at Loyola Law School, and my father said, you ought to take an interest in something called contemporary American folk art. I had no idea what he was talking about, but he said it's affordable. You can go meet with the artist, hear their stories and their life experiences. As I went and I visited with this first folk artist, Bernice Sims from Bruton, Alabama. Now you gotta understand, when I first started collecting this type of art, there was no cell phone, no GPS. All I had was a map in my hand, and I was going to these small rural towns, predominantly in the South, and I had never heard of these places before. So I would go to the town and I would go to the local church and I'd say, could you please tell me where the, this artist lives? And they sure enough would know, everybody in the small town would know where that artist lived and they would direct me exactly where to go. For about 30 some odd years now, I've been traversing the country, predominantly the southern states, and uh, meeting with self-taught artists and hearing their stories and learning about their lives and the simplicity of their lives. Most of them came from very humble beginnings. Many of them couldn't rewrite. They never had any formal training in artwork. And I was just so captivated uh, by their work, whether they were memory painters or visionary artists, whatever it was, it just, it spoke to me. I think it's important to understand that Clementine Hunter, more than any other folk artist in America, really captured what American life was like at the turn of the 19th century. And that's part of American history. And what I'm trying to do by all of my designs and creations is keep her world-class artwork alive. Who knew that works once, once sold for five and $10 in the 1940s would one day sell for many thousands of dollars? She is considered the pioneer of contemporary American folk art and the most famous, of the most famous folk artist in America and most, most definitely the most celebrated folk artist in this country.